What's going on guys, Jordan Stanley Payne, multi-family freaking mafia coming to you live on a beautiful Monday out of Montana. Appreciate you guys being here. I spent all weekend trying to figure out what the hell I was gonna talk about. Um, I mean, guys, we, we've covered a lot of stuff in a very few episodes. We've talked about wholesaling and buying and holding and being a real estate agent and agent and a ton of mindset stuff. So I've been trying to figure out, you know, what, what's the missing element? And I really do believe that we are missing the big picture element uh, of real estate, of being an entrepreneur, and of getting financially free. So the majority of the people that are listening to this from literally all over the world, we've got now 24 different countries that are listening to this, the majority of the people listening to this are wanting to become wholesalers, whatever a wholesaler is. You guys know my stance on that. You're, you're a business owner. You're a CEO. You're not a wholesaling, wholesaler. Guys, understand that the tools, wholesaling, buy and hold, fix and flip, being an agent, all of that, those are all tools underneath the umbrella of being a business owner. So the people that don't understand that they're a business owner, I'm a wholesaler. They greatly struggle and they often quit. It's never been easier than it is right now in 2018 to become a fucking quitter, right? Back in the day, you had a brick and mortar business. You had to get a mortgage or you had to lease a big, you know, stick brick mortar business. You had to pay rent or pay mortgage. You had to have inventory. You had net 30. You had product. You had insurance. You had all this different stuff. And because of that, people did not want to quit. They did not want to go out of business. It was a big public event. Everybody in town would know if you freaking quit. It's not how it is now, huh? You woke up on Monday, you decided that you were a wholesaler or you decided that you were going to become a, a real estate professional. On Friday, you quit. No one even knew because you never even had an actual business to begin with. So guys, the big picture here, the reason why I do not wholesale like most of you wholesale, the reason why I do not flip like most of you guys flip is I understand the big picture and I understand I mean, the end game. What, what's your goal if you're going to wholesale? Oh, I want to do five, five deals a month. Okay, great. You're making twenty five to forty five, fifty thousand dollars Then what? You're going to have to duplicate that and duplicate it and duplicate it and duplicate it. And the second you stop, all your income stops, right? Oh, I'm going to be a fix and flipper. Great. What's your end goal? Guys, we have to think, we have to think bigger. We have to see the bigger picture out there than the, the short term term gratification. You're broke. I fucking get it. I've been there myself. Right? You're you're panicking. You've got you've got bills stacking up and you, you don't know how to pay for them. So you're looking for instant gratification. You know, a quick three, four, five, six, ten thousand dollars. The problem is the second you get that money, it's gone. Boom. It's gone. It was spent before you ever even made it. Tell me, tell me, how is that freedom? How is that being able to enjoy life? You're constantly stressed out, right? The reason why I transitioned from wholesaling and trying to flip to buy and hold was I could see the big picture down the road. I saw what I wanted my life to become. And it was not the daily grind, you know, hustle and grind, wake up and grind. It wasn't that. It was freedom. Now, am I glad I started with wholesaling? Sure. It got my foot in the door. I learned a lot. And, you know, if it hadn't have been for that, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. But I've seen people that have been pursuing this, this idea, this fantasy of just becoming this big badass wholesaler and very, very few people do it. A lot of people say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wholesale so I can get up some capital so I can buy and hold. You know you don't need capital to buy and hold, right? I don't use my own capital. Never have, probably never will. Even if I was making a million dollars a year and just had a bank account with millions of dollars in it, I still wouldn't go pay cash. Guys, it's a bigger picture. It's a bigger understanding. We talk about mindset and we talk so much on finance. 
Uh, my business partner, Todd Fleming, has a, an academy called uh, the Wealth Academy. And the sub, the sub headline is how to make money and keep it. People don't focus on that. They never learn that. So they make five grand. It's already spent. They have to go do it again. There's, there's no satisfaction in that because it's a losing equation. If I buy, let's call it a, a 10 unit. If I buy a 10 unit building and I am going to net, you know, somewhere between $2,000 and $3,500 a month, I have options. I have deep options. I, I, there's a lot I can do with that. If there's any equity in it, I can re-leverage equity, and I do it all the time, pull out $100,000, okay? Now, if I went and took that $100,000 and bought, you know, a 20 unit, was I spending my money? Absolutely not. What if I had a, uh, a financial need and I, I, I took that money out and spent it on a, a financial need? Do you guys understand the taxes on pulling out equity? Do you? Do you understand how much you get taxed when you do a wholesale deal? Serious question. How about a fix and flip? So the money is already gone, and oftentimes you're behind because of the capital gains tax. It's different with buy and hold. It's different with pulling out equity. What about a line of credit? Take a line of credit out against the equity and go buy 10 more properties. Guys, we're, we're working one time and getting paid generationally. My kids, my kids' kids, my great-grandkids, all of that. You can't, you, you can't give your kids a wholesale check 20 years from now and say, hey, I worked real hard for this. It's not how it works, right? So guys, I want you to start thinking about the big picture and what do you really want? What do you really want your day-to-day -to, -day to look like? What do you really want your life to look like? Are you satisfied wholesaling? Some people actually love wholesaling. Dude, I love being out there in the field and doing this and that. Look, dude, you can still do that. There's nothing wrong with that. You can still do that, but don't have that be your only option. There's deals that we assign, yeah, but it's not my only option. I've got a lot of options. Being a CEO of a company, especially in real estate, is all about understanding options and understanding finances. So if you love being out in your neighborhood, do it because you love being out in your neighborhood and helping people, not because, you know, you've got $5,000 worth of bills and you've got to do a $5,000 deal. Big picture, big picture. What do I want three generations past me to look like? There's no way they can continue on the wholesaling thing. Is wholesaling even going to be around in three years? I wrote a book explaining why it's not. You can't see it. I can see it. Other people, other CEOs that are looking at this from a 10,000 foot view can see that it's not going to be around. You can't see it. What if you worked really hard for 12 years and you built up this wholesaling Empire, right? Maybe you outsourced, you joined my five week scale academy, you learned how to outsource and leverage and build a team, all of that. And you were doing really, really well. You know, you got 10, 15 years invested into this. Boom, wholesaling's illegal. Some kid got jacked up on Mountain Dew and cocaine, was running around making blind offers. He screwed over the wrong person and went viral, and, you know, our boy Trump or whoever says, hey, look, this, this type of transaction is no longer legal. Poof. Gone. Your whole business model. <clears throat> Jordan, that'd never happen. You, you, you willing, to, willing to bet on that? 20 grand. I bet you 20 grand. It's going to happen at some point. Bigger picture. Start thinking as a CEO. Start thinking as a business owner. What do you want your kids to inherit? Your grandkids, your great grandkids, what do you want them to inherit? I did the math and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess this up because I don't have it in front of me, I should have. Um, my kids, if, if I continue on how I'm continuing on, my kids will inherit something like half a million dollars a month, per month, times 12, $500,000 in passive income. 
if they just continued, you know, on my path, you know, if they just, if they stayed consistent with my path, my grandkids would have something like $1.8 million a month times 12 in passive income. Now, my great grandkids, if I lived that long, again, I don't have it in front of me. If I lived that long, it would be something, three point something million dollars a month, passive net residual. Now that is looking at, you know, my amortization schedule, you know, by the time I'm done, all my shit will be paid for, right? So my cash flow is going to go through the fricking roof by the time my kids even start. They could re-leverage any of that. They could take the whole fucking portfolio, re-leverage it, pull out $20 million and owner finance 1,500 more units. Guys, there's a lot of power in this. Unfortunately, there's not the same power with wholesaling or fixing and flipping. Sure as hell, not the same power with being a real estate agent. So my encouragement, again, guys, start looking at the bigger picture. What do I want my kids' life to look like, my grandkids? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm the first one in my family attempting to do this. You know, um, my dad had the right idea. My great great grandfather wasn't interested in business. You know, like all, I'm the first one in my family to attempt this, and out of every generation before me, no one could pull it off. No one knew how. I'm the first one that began to start that process, and I hope if you're listening to this that you're going to make that choice as well. If you're listening to this, you didn't wake up fucking rich. If you did, I don't know why you're listening to this podcast. I didn't. You know, my, my life is very, very similar to most people's. I just fixed my head and understood that there was something different out there. What do you want your kids, grandkids, great-grandkids to look like? Guys, there's going to be books written about the change that I made in my family tree. You know, it's going to go down in history as, look, this, this crazy motherfucker that drink, drinks too much and smokes like a chimney, goofy looking. This dude started a shift in his family that went on for generation after generation. Now, can somebody go fuck it up? Of course. You know, maybe my grandkids are just whatever. They wanted to go to space with Tesla. So they spent all the money or they sold everything. Yeah, it could happen. But that's not, on, that's not on me. That's on them. Guys, I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Sorry this one came out a little bit late. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? Sorry about that. Appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon.